Sean, you know, you mentioned front men a minute ago. Sean Michaels would have been like a wrestling equivalent of a great rock front man. Kind of like a David Lee Roth, right? Totally. Totally. Yeah, so, could... and, and that continuum goes backwards. So if you say David Lee Roth, you have to say Robert Plant, right? Well, that's, I mean, that's, you're talking to me like quintessential Robert Plant, number one. So let's talk, let's talk, let's, let's spend a minute on this before we get to right. the podcast stampede here. So if we had to talk about that, you had to put your list together of what, of, of your top front men, greatest front men, rock front men. First of all, what are the qualities? What, what does it take to be considered a great front man. I think you got to. I think you've got to have incredible energy, and you've got to have some. You got to have some some vocal range. I mean, it just it, when it comes down to it, man, you're still if you don't have some have a couple of octaves, you ain't gonna be able to. You know, mm. so it's not gonna be able. You're not gonna be able to go. Yeah. Oh! Mm-hmm. Oh! Right. I'm sorry. Like this. Is that a little uh, Belafonte? That was actually pretty Mercury. Oh, was it? Oh, the teeth. Got this. <laughs> Mercury. Okay, so there, there, there's a perfect okay. example, right? So great, energy. Great front mat. Yeah. You said energy. I would also say a gift for gab. You know, in between songs, you know, to to keep the crowd hot, got to yeah. be able to work the mic. This is not unlike being a good professional wrestler, Kevin. As you're realizing the things we're talking about here, energy. You said vocal ability, but you could call that in-ring ability. A gift for gab. How about physicality? You, you got to be all over the stage, right? Mick Jagger's still doing it, what, 80, 80 years old? 104. He's 104. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, so physicality, right? Something is lost when a performer cannot work the stage. Something's lost in the performance. So I would say... Yeah, the ability to kind of be all over the place. Then there's an X factor to it, too, guys, that are just interesting to watch. Jagger's actually not 80 yet. He's going to be 80. Jagger's really? Se- yeah, Jagger's 79. Yeah. Mm. He's 10 years. Him and Hogan, I think, are 10 years different. And I don't know why I know that. <laughs> well, they often come up in the same conversations all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hogan... Hogan did play bass. That's true. And I mean, you know, so there is, you know, Hogan and, and Hogan was kind of a front man for that rock and wrestling kind of thing there. He was, you know, they had oh, a, for sure. a, they had a top 10 uh, uh, CD. That well, the, rest, the, wrestling the, the, the wrestling album? The uh, wrestling highway, what the fuck it was called. The album, the wrestling album, right? From the uh, the 80s you're talking about? But this they, they had another one that did, did well. Oh, pile driver, was mm-hmm. that? It? I think it was pile driver. Oh, you're thinking of a, you're thinking of a vivid video, right? We're back to that, I guess. <laughs> Christy Canyon in pile driver. <laughs> Stop screaming, Christy. We're not we're not on tape yet. Uh, also, I'm going to say that in what I consider to be the best front men in rock, there's a bit of rebellion. Yeah. Nothing too safe. About a front man. Christopher Cross. I love a little Salon myself when it comes on the radio. Um, and you can get caught between the moon and New York City and fall in love. But there's the anti front man, right? MTV came and killed him. People loved him on the radio. And then they saw he was stoic, still. And looked like he could easily uh, be a tourist in Italy, right? Maybe maybe a little doughier <laughs> little, than we little, considered little, our friend. Little, little patchy. So here's the list. Let's go now. Let's go all the way back. Let's start and credit like Little Richard and Elvis, Elvis. and Elvis, right? For, for well, getting. And this. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Um, Jerry Lee Lewis in, in that group. Sure. Um. Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, who that was uh, uh, Chuck Berry. Yeah, Chuck for sure. Chuck was Chuck was a huge influence early to a lot of uh, a lot of rock and roll. Yeah, 
So, and so, uh, so our front men that came after definitely have right. have emulated what they have laid down. So let's get and that. And we're out hopeful, of the way. And, and hopefully, like, like when, when I thought when when, when I when think about front men, I think of uh, your uh, disqualified at any time you use auto tune. If you use what auto tune? Oh, forget forget it. That's not even in the discussion now. Out. Absolutely. I saw I saw you two in concert, and Bono sounded on every song that he sang as good as he did on vinyl. Unbelievable, right. unbelievable. Right. And I'm not really a huge U2 fan, but I, I it was one of those deals where a buddy of mine said, "Hey, I got you." Know, like, I'm like, "Summertime, what are you gonna do?" Yeah. So Sunday, bloody Sunday, baby. I mean, is it outrageous to say that that they've got to be able to sing? They have to <laughs> sing their own I mean, fucking songs every night. I mean, I mean come they, on. I always liked that Pearl Jam always mixed it up. Like Pearl Jam ne never played the same set every night. You know, it was they, like when they when they did the sound check and the better would go and and he'd write down what they're going to do and then the playlist would, you know, the playlist would be different. And he, you know, there's a guy that um, you know a lot of uh, people won't give like the grunge guys, any credit uh, because they, you know, like uh, I know that um, uh, Kirk Cobain and Eddie Vedder and those guys said that, you know, grunge wasn't about a front man. It was about, you know, the statement that the band made and uh, which is great. You can say that, but I, I'm still, it, since it's, it's my fucking show, you're, you're a front guy and they're just, that's the way it's going to fucking be. But I get what, the, what he's talking about, though. Yeah. In in that the identity, like, well, let's talk about Eddie Vedder, right? Because he, he's right. the one who's on the table right now. Um, I enjoy listening to Eddie Vedder. I think uh, he was the right guy for the right band for the right product at the time. But that, sh but the showmanship was a little absent, right? It, it was he was I'd, I'd put him like in a Bret Hart category. You know, uh, yeah, technically actually, sound. But he, I, I, I always remember that he did do the dive off the balcony. So I remember the video. Yeah, he, he did put his body at, at great risk. But uh, you say front man, that's just not what comes to mind for me. Well, I mean, he took, he took, he, he actually took the place of, of uh, man, I can't, that's, I, I, I shouldn't even bring it up because I can't remember. Mother Love, Love, Mother Love, Love, Who? Who was the who was their lead guy? Um, who was that that passed? Mother Love Bones, lead guy that better better took his place. We got our, our, our He's working on it. Okay. Um, Andrew Wood. Andrew, Andrew Wood. Patrick Wood. Andrew Patrick Wood, my son. Okay. Th threw that from the Florida network over here. <laughs> as he as he's got the Waffle House people on the floor. Um, <laughs> So no, um, but then I, that you you look at that same uh, that same group of people and like Chris Cornell had it, and it was 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 a lot more. There was more movement to him. Um, I would I would put um, uh, Tom York on there from Radiohead. I mean, my son and I saw them. Uh, I don't know, maybe five six years ago in Tampa, and man, Radiohead like. They don't have a bad song, and I mean, when you go out there, there's like every dude that's on, that's in the band can play 23 instruments and 42 percussion things, and I mean, it's just like you're. you're and granted, we were fucking, we had a little little buzz on, but little buzz, yeah. <laughs> I take my son. My son's like fucking 16, 15 years old. I take him. We go to the. He's like, you know, he looks like fucking. He's 25. So I'm so fucking I'm so fucked up that, but at the same time, and they got these big giant fucking plastic cups, you know, 32 ounce cups, and they're dumping these beer cans into them. And I, but we walked up, I said, "Oh fuck, man, I fucking caught mouth like a motherfucker from driving to Daytona Beach." I'm like, "We should get a fucking beer, you know." And uh, I said, "Fuck, you know what tastes good, man? Is one of them Bud Light limes, but we're gonna look like fucking just." Absolute, you know, <laughs> just 
We fucking order Bud Light Lime, man. We're, we're gonna get fucking. We end up in a fucking fight. My son just looks at me and goes, "Dad, they're pouring it into a fucking see-through cup. They're not gonna know what the fuck's in it. It's just gonna look like beer." And I went, "Okay, two glad, Bud Limes. <laughs> glad, glad I'm at the wheel." <laughs> Son, you got this on the way home? <laughs> so we agree Mick Mick goes on. Mick, Mick. So we got Plant, Mick, Morrison's got to be on there. Yes, Plant, Mick, Morrison. Those are my first three right here. Um, here's here's one that... Uh, and Mercury we put on. Yeah, we put, we put Mercury on. Um, we put Eddie Vedder. You put Eddie Vedder. Okay, you're not going to put... No, okay. Well, we, we, I, you we, can we, have him. We'll disagree. We'll just you disagree. How about uh, McCartney and Lennon? Mm, right. Paul McCartney? See. And, and Lennon? How about, think about Let It Be. Songwriters. Songwriters, oh, musicians, brilliant. Front I don't know. Man. Fucking sh- sh- think about Shea Stadium. Think about the, the era. Think about when they came out and sang fucking Help and Hard Day's Night. I mean, that fucking, they were. Yeah, they played their asses off. Yeah, if, I mean, if you got to realize that, I, mean, I, I think that I, I think I mean I thought Paul I thought Paul McCartney was a good front man for fucking Wings. I'm not. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm I'm not saying he's Steven Tyler, right? But okay, just throwing him out there. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm you know I'm an old motherfucker. If I if I can get a Beatles, if I can get a Beatle anything, I I, I take it. David Lee Roth. Has to, right? Yeah, oh, God, yeah. Continuation of the plant thing. But not Sammy Hagar. You know, Sam's... I prefer Dave's Van Halen. No question. But you, sound, you, sound, you sound like Natalie Portman in Closer. I, 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 what, that, what does it mean? <laughs> oh, so she, she, um, she's seeing Jude Law, and she's fucking... And, and, she's, and she is a fucking Clive Owen. And Jude Law comes back, and you know, and Jude fucks Julia Roberts. There's only really four characters in this movie. If you haven't seen Closer, it's uh, it's it's a it's fucking a classic, and it's where kind of Clive Owen got his fucking his his name, but uh, Jude Law asked Natalie Portman, says you know, but did you fuck him? She said, Yeah, I fucked him. He's did you like it? Yeah, I liked it, but I prefer you more. And why is that? I don't know. It's just you're different. So just, you know, she preferred. I prefer Dave more. Yeah, you prefer yeah. Dave. Yeah, you prefer yeah, Dave s- more. S- I, that was a long way to get to that, wasn't it? Oof, man. <laughs> Everybody just clicked on Cult of Cornette. They left. That's all right. They got I fucking, I'll throw a dildo through their fucking window on that. Right. They're coming back. They'll come back. I always remember a discussion. I was, oh, I'll give you the exact age. I saw Rat when I was in sixth grade. So how old are you in sixth grade? Like 12 maybe, right? I was 17, but. Well, that was your fourth time through. <laughs> um, so a friend of mine's older sister, his like 17-year-old sister, and all her friends were going to see Rat. So they took us. So I'm sitting in the car, like, you know, sipping my first beer, surrounded by all these chicks in tank tops and cut off shirts, and they're going in. So we, see, we go to the concert. Now, Rat's the, uh, the headliner, but the opening act was a local band named Bon Jovi. Nice. In, I guess, 85 or 86. So we're leaving, and we're walking through the parking lot, and I'm mesmerized by, and I learned a lot by listening to their discussion whether they would take John Bon Jovi or Stephen Piercy. And they're debating this, and I'm loving listening to it. At one point, one of the girls kind of sums it all up perfectly when she goes, she goes, no, 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 John's cute, but Stephen's hot. I was like, "That's the, the, I got to take that with me through high school. There's yeah. cute and there's hot. For guys, so that that's a front man lesson for me from some Mark, uh, Sister Michelle's. I don't think my Frankenstein ass has ever been considered cute. <laughs> uh, Axel Rose, yes, yeah, gotta be Axel, right? Axel, for sure. 
Always, it was, you, you had to have like 10 times the charisma if you were in a band where one of the, the, the other members was a star in their own right. Like right? Slash, so, right? Fuck. Slash. I mean, uh, Eddie for Van Halen. Yep. You had to be so much David Lee because half that crowd was there to see Eddie. Yeah. So you had to be so much more. Of and, I, and I loved, I mean, that, that, you know, I grew up in that era where when you went to a concert, if you didn't get a fucking five and a half minute guitar solo somewhere during that fucking night, followed by a John Bonham-ish fucking drum solo, it was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. There's only so many times I can listen to Foghat play Smoke on the Water, right? The, uh, the, the drum solos were always the bathroom break, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> And it, it, it's it's one of those things, man. To play drums is an, it's amazing. Talent. Oh, of course. You know, it's fucking it's it's. But it's at the same time, it's just like, like I I, I wouldn't put Phil Collins as a front guy just because he fucking he's playing the drums. See, that's an interesting thing. But you know what I thought about? I, I, yeah, Dave Grohl was a drummer for Nirvana, but put him in front. And Dave Grohl's a good. Probably the best rock and roll front man right now. Exactly. See, now that's that's an interesting thing. You got to come out from behind the drum kit, which Phil, which Phil did, you know. But again, front man, front man. It's 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 a whole thing. It's a, it's it's the rebellion. It's the excitement. It's a whole thing. And Phil's talented, and he's written. Jesus Christ! I mean, if you if if the music catalog of the last fifty years was put in a time capsule and 300 years from now aliens crack it and look inside they would think phil collins was the fucking elvis presley of of this generation think of how many hit songs between genesis and solo phil collins has some hard on will probably compile that and put it on our twitter feed or something but i would love to know how many top 10 songs phil collins has had over the last 30 years as long as I don't have to fucking listen to Susu Studio or whatever the fucking that one was. Don't even pretend your feet don't fucking tap when that nah. comes on the radio. I, I'm, I'm going to go with my, my... If I have to pick a fucking drummer, I'm going to go with Don Henley. Mm-hmm. As, as what? One of the, as the greatest? No, I just as fucking... I mean, if you, a front man drummer. Front, front man drummer. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah I'm with you at that, yeah, of course. Um... Plus, he, plus, Henley was fucking hot. <laughs> Not cute. Colin like Phil. Was, Phil was cute. <laughs> he rubbed his head. Yeah. <clears throat> now, R- Paul rub Stanley. Rub his head and he fucking shit a dildo. Paul Stanley. Kiss. Paul Stanley had a few things. You had a, The personality had to come through the makeup, right? Like working under a hood. Project. Worked under a hood and had personality, <laughs> and you've got a s- fucking sneering demon behind you for the entire show. So that's again, not, that's that's seventeen feet tall. Right, you've got to be who's going to vomit blood all over everybody yeah. in three minutes, and you've got to keep, you've got to be the focal point. So again, uh, props to someone like that who can be so much the front man. But when you when 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 somebody says to me, "Kiss," the first thing I think of is Gene Simmons. You see, right? I don't think of Stanley. The iconography of the tongue and the yeah, the blood and everything. Whereas the opposite of Alice Cooper, you know, you see, you think Alice Cooper, man, that was a fucking show. That was like, like that was a different. He was one of he was the he was one of the you know the the first that really did like a fucking show. Mm. Uh, Steven Tyler, we said right? Yeah, Steven, of course. I just I heard him sing fucking like a year ago something he was playing piano, and he was at some uh, he had like fucking different color fucking you know he looked like fucking uh, Steven Tyler and Johnny Depp had a baby, um, but uh, he fucking sang and it was like and he wasn't no lip sync shit and I was just like man that motherfucker still can I can hit those high notes like a motherfucker man. And one of, and just one of those guys, the voice is so unique. You need yeah. two seconds to go up, Tyler. I saw them in '74, and I, I, I'm almost positive. I know that their their first album, "Dream On," is the big fucking hit, right? The, yeah, the song "Dream On" that that was their <laughs> that was their first hit. Yeah he, yeah, he does that fucking where he goes ah. Yeah. They're just like, stay with me, stay. 
Yeah, no, they, they were the real deal. Uh, yeah. Dominic typed in the comments here, Joe Stronger of the Clash. I would say yes for for that for that genre that uh see i i had to i had to i had to cancel them why because in rock the cast bar they used the word mental retardation <laughs> boom they're gone yeah my uh elvis costello will no longer play oliver's army would have been a great entrance song for me but me and me and scott hall's favorite for a second werewolf of london his hair was perfect. Scott would always go, his hair was perfect. We'd be in the car when that fucking come on. We'd, be, we'd just shut up. Everybody shut the fuck up. Werewolf in London. Now that was Warren Zevon, right? Yeah, Warren Zevon. Right. Um, oh, you said Elvis Costello. I said Elvis Costello for all of his army. I, I, because I, they, I was never a, a huge Elvis Costello oh, fan. Oh, he was great. He was a genius. But he used the N-word in, in Oliver's Army. So oh. that he said he will no longer play it live. It's in the context of you know, the Irish, English. Nah, forget it. Whatever. It is what it is. We're in the generation we're in. What are we going to do? What are we going to change? Know. We're going to change? We're going to change things? I'm not going to change anything. How about, okay, here's one for you. Now, I don't know why this is, and I'm not a big ACDC fan, but I only like ACDC when Bon Scott sang. Okay. It's a different thing. I loved the Bon Scott ACDC because I thought there was so much more blues right. in it. It became pretty straightforward rock from Back in Black on. So from 1980 on with Brian Johnson, it became that thing. And I like that too. But Bon, yeah, Bon had that front man thing. Yeah, yep. And I think what happened when Brian came in and he had very unique voice and even to this day still does that, that growly thing. I don't know how he does. But Angus stepped to the forefront. And I think Angus kind of became as much the front man part of the show as Brian, whereas he was much less so with, with Bon. Right. Almost like the Chili Peppers. With Flea? You yeah. Mean? Yeah. Flea, Flea, you know. And, Anthony uh, Kiedis. And, and, and anything that fucking Travis does, like for even you know when he was playing the sticks for 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 a blank, you know. Um, I'm looking here. Uh, so I, I, here, here's one that is one of my sons and my favorite, and I used to torture, not torture, but I, I, I made him listen. To, I just took him to school when he was young. Like we'd listen to like old. It was like you know. Zeppelin, the early years, and like we'd listen to all this different, and uh, th that's when um, it was grunge was, but like we would listen to Alice in Chains all the time, and to me, like Lane, sta it, Lane was it, it was as good as a front guy, and until the till his last breath, even when he's doing that unplugged and he's about ninety pounds, mm. you know, it's just like. Yeah, I enjoyed Alice in Chains music. Yeah, I liked them. Of, of all the grunge at that time, they were they were like that was my favorite grunge band. More than Soundgarden. I I, I liked Audio Slave, you know, when, yeah, when, when, Slave, when, sure. when, when he went when he went when Chris went with them. I liked that. I like because they had that rage. The rage guy went to was was their bass player. <laughs> That guy that you know, plays it like a fucking plays it mm. like a six string. See, I just I, I. Where's Jericho when we need him? Chris, what's yeah. that fucking guy's name? Chris as front man. Right. Chris is front man. Right. Exactly. See, I just hated that 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 one of the tenets of of the grunge thing was to be anti front man, man, anti anti showbiz man. You know, like, if these guys fucking cut loose, I, w I would have put them on my list. I can't put these guys on the list who stood there with their hands in their pockets during the shows. They sounded great. They worked yeah, with I, the I music. Mean, but. Yeah, you know, when they, when they talk about, you know, uh, Jim Morrison, like, he used to sing with his back to the, to the uh, audience when he started. And then the next thing you know, right. he turned, you know, he's, he's the Lizard King. Right. Well, the, the, they should have looked for the inner lizard king. Which I will say, uh, uh, Bell Kilmer absolutely was robbed of a fucking Oscar. Oh, in, for the portrayal of Oliver's, uh, Oliver's yeah. They said, you know, because he, he did all the vocals. 
Um, it was a, it was a great put. Did you see? There's a documentary about Val Kilmer now. Did you see? He's in such bad shape. Did you know that? No. It's called. I don't want to see it because I I, I I always I always select his work. Yeah, no, me too. And I, but I didn't know. I guess uh, is the throat cancer. Somebody will probably put this up. We'll yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's he's taken I, I, his yeah. uh, like his ability to speak and everything. And I just did not know all this was happening. Um, and then uh, this documentary popped up. I was like, holy fuck. Um, let's see. So some of the more contemporary stuff. I need a little help. From oh, Tristan wait, oh, Nash here. Wait, wait, uh, I got to. I got to get one more in because I don't want to get. Fucking, of course. Uh, what do you feel about Ronnie Van Zant from uh, Skin, from Skinner? Yeah. Um, as fr- as as yeah, in the category of like these guys though, as a it's different, completely different. You know, it's a completely different vibe, but. I mean, if you've ever been to a Skinner concert, you know, and I've heard I I, I didn't have the pleasure when he was alive, but I've went I've went mm-hmm. since, and they just, you know, they they did a tour with uh, ZZ Top. I saw and it was fucking amazing. Did they have but, like uh, fourteen guitars on stage at once? Uh, Skinner, I, I think. Uh, so about the most, the most I ever saw was when I was a kid. I saw Blue Oyster Cult and they had five lead guitarists on stage at one time. Um, so Tristan threw one up that was interesting for me. Mike Patton. I did like Faith No More very much. They had a very short shelf life. Right. But uh, I did. But he, think, I, I could sing his ass off. I thought Mike Patton was great. I thought he he at the time was that interesting. Like he had a little bit of rap going on in the music. And this is like 1990-ish, 91 maybe. No, I think it was, I was still in high school. So it had to be like 90, 89, whatever. Um so that it was an interesting look into to what was to come with with rock right. music. Um, Tom York, you mentioned for Radiohead, he had on my list. Billy Corgan, we could have some debate here, I think maybe. He's so talented. I mean that totally. I mean, so he's very very talented. I haven't had the, pr- the privilege to see him live. I have seen him, you know, on, on video and stuff like that. But you can't get any kind of a feel whatsoever unless you see somebody live. Like I saw, I remember the first time I saw Jagger, I was just like, oh, wow, that's yeah. a completely different experience. Did you know he was a wrestling fan? Or, Mick? Uh, n- no. <laughs> no. Uh, Billy. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. He, I, I, I met him, I think I was Diesel, and I, I went to the Hyatt. I, I, I went down there, and I just looked over, and there's just this dude playing pool. And I ordered my beer and I sit down. I was I was done early, and uh, where and I look over. I'm like, God, that guy looks like Billy Kirk. I walk over. I said, Hey man, what's up? He goes, Do you play pool? I'm like, Not very good. So we're playing, and he started talking. You know, and he yeah, I was just like he'd watch. You know, he, we, we you know he had watched the show, but then you know came over to talk to a couple of guys that he knew, but I didn't. You know, I didn't know that he was a, a fan. Yeah. And then, no, he has. He owns. Does he own NWA now? He bought into. Um, let's see what pops up in the comments here. Uh, yes, he does. Is the uh, is what yeah, we it's have NWA. Here. Yeah. Someone put Springsteen in there. Springsteen's a solo though, so I wouldn't. Uh, I know he, the nah, East, Street. East Street. I I think especially when he came out with the at, at Born to Run that, that, that Greetings from Asbury Park, his early stuff. You know, he does that. He does a good cover of "Blinded by the Light." I always saw him though as, as the singer songwriter. I, I didn't really think of him as part of a band. I know the E Street Band, but it was always Bruce. Come on, man! When you got Clarence playing that horn, you got a band, baby. Yeah. You're talking about Flea. You're talking about. I mean, that's uh, that's a band. You know, I think well, you're, you're gonna get fucking disowned in New Jersey. You fuck around with I, I, listen. I, I give him props, <laughs> but, but we're talking about frontman of band. I see Bruce in his own category here. So next on this list, um, let's let's get a little more current. Can we move to maybe? Uh, I, I got I got I got one more I want to ask about. Go ahead. It's your show. I, actually, I have two. I have two because this is a person that never ever gets put in the. Um, I'm actually going to bring up three, because uh, this is the first one's Jimi Hendrix. Oh yeah, I guess like, right. nobody ever, nobody ever like, and they're like, oh, you, I'm like, wait, 
when I was a kid, he was with the experience, those, you know, those two white boys. And um, I'm like, he, he's got to be, right? He's got to be. He's a, he was a front man. I, I guess not a solo, though. You don't see him as a solo? See, I put him in the Springsteen yeah. category. I, I no, just, one went to, I, no one said, I, I'm going I, to see I, the I, Jimi I, Hendrix experience tonight. I, you went to see Jimi Hendrix. You know, I just, well, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I, he could have fronted for anybody. Hundred percent. That, that I think that's my that's my thing. No, he had the juice. No, no, no question. I don't. You know, I I think that he um, and and, and, the, and we're talking front talking front front men. But I will put at that at that period of time right there, sixty seven, sixty eight. Um, fucking Janis Joplin. Joplin, right? Fuck, man. Like if anybody had more, of just. Range and fucking showmanship and, and brought it every fucking night, man. Janis Joplin was there, and then this is my third one, which is my my, my one that, he, even though he was with the Revolution, does Prince fit in? Because Prince was definitely, he was definitely hot. He was a great, he was a great, great frontman. But again, I see him as a solo, right? But but yeah, but take him and drop him into any of the bands we've talked about, and right. yes, you know I think that's what Alice in Chains needed. They needed Prince to come in when Lane Staley died and <laughs> and take over. Nobody was taking that. Nobody that was that. At least at least they brought a guy in that like like was like could cover two of his octaves. You know, it's like oh nice try. How often does the frontman replacement work? We mentioned ACDC. It oh, worked. Journey. Oh, with this guy, with um, I mean, I, I, I personally, I would not go. I would not go see them. But then again, I fucking refuse to see anybody that fucking plays at a July Fourth network fucking <laughs> concert. <laughs> if you're playing on July Fourth, fuck you, man. You sold out. I can't. I can't watch it. But you wouldn't go see him because it's not Steve Perry, right? Yeah, Steve Perry to me is is journey. You right. know. So ACDC yeah. did it successfully. You would go see Brian Johnson, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now, Deep Purple had, like, several fucking, like, um, they had a I know, I know Coverdale started as the Deep Purple uh, vocalist and then went on to White Snake. I'm pretty mm. sure. There was a, they had another, uh, Deep Purple had another vocalist that was, God, I can't, it was one of my brother's favorite bands. Mm-hmm. But then, get, then, you know, we, can we really go, like, we haven't brought up Ozzy. Oh, yeah, he has to be. Because you have yeah. Sabbath. He yeah. was a solo, yeah. but, he, but he was the front man for, for my, Sabbath. Yeah. My son and I have, have always had the comment of, if Ozzy Osbourne is, is singing a song and he's on a train and it's going off the rails and it's a crazy train, how fucked up is that train? <laughs> <laughs> After how many sativa capsules is that conversation? I, I'm one, one for me, one for you. <laughs> so yeah, Ozzy's on it, no question. Yeah. Ozzy's there. We right. we slipped. You know what, Daltrey? We kind of we kind of left Daltrey off. What do you just, think? I, just on on uh, the the CSI uh, opens. He's got to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, front man, for yeah. sure. Works, works. And I know we're probably forgetting people, all, all you dicks out there that are going to lambast us on YouTube for this. But um, How about Sting? We probably should get Sting a, a, a shout-out. I like Sting. Uh, I'm not putting him in, up there with the... Uh, you still holding that Starcade fucking Mama Cita thing against him? Or? No, no, no. I'm, I'm holding uh, the... Uh, I just can't put him up there next to David Lee, next to Plant. How about this? Okay, how about this one? Talent, Lu talented. I, yeah, okay. How about this one? Lou Graham Forner. <laughs> see. Can I, can you, got I, some, you got some stats on Forner for me to back this up. Matter of fact, okay. you do. Yes, I do. I, you're, Sean, you're correct. <laughs> A very, uh, a very little known fact is yeah. the for, the band Foreigner was the first band to have eight of their first eight songs 
uh, that they recorded were all in the Billboard Top 20. Last time that done, that's right, McCartney, Lennon, Starr, Harrison, I think those guys were called the Beatles. Back at you. I was shocked at that. But I then I thought about it, and I thought, when I was in high school, I owned the cassette, the, uh, the Foreigner's Greatest Hits cassette. Right. And I didn't own any. I know I'm a Poser fan, right? You're supposed to have the album, you know. The, the, but I had the greatest hits. Every whether there were the 10, 12 songs on or whatever, every one of them was early, first or second album, Farner, and certified hits. They, they did not squeeze anything. Oh, right. In there. No, no. It was... So I kind of get it. I, I guess I kind of see that now. But I am surprised. If you said what band did, I don't think I would have picked Farner. No, I, I wouldn't have either. I was actually I did some research, and um, I have to I have to throw this guy in my personal as Paul Rogers, who was the first lead uh, guy from Bad Company. Yeah, just because in a car by myself I can sing pretty close to that. <laughs> I can kind of get in there and feel like I. Please you know. let us hear this. Let him get high enough one night when we. Record. I was born. Are we close? Six it, gun. Anything kicking in yet? Where Bad we can get... company. I'm good. Uh, so for for some contemporary, we could have here. Anthony Hopkins sing Bad Company. That would be interesting. Bad company. Ah, fuck you. How about you know? I I'm I'm struggling with some of these some of these newer ones here. Okay, how about you know who I gotta I gotta say, Hunter Young, of Mood Ring, no question. You agree with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta be. Um, this is all, this is all music I hear in, in, in my home. Alex Sassy, Rat Stick, up there. Is there some some of our boys? Yeah, up there. Tatiana Shemalyuk of Ginger. She's Ukrainian. One of the coastal cities. Yeah. She uh she actually um she's it's, it's uh she's a, she sings in the summer times in a lot of the uh the the coastal Czech cities. Right. See, I don't know any of these fucking people I just said. Tristan sent me this before. And, <laughs> and his selections for the he gave he gave me by decade. He was very kind of OCD about like the, here's the nineties, here's the two thousands, here's the two thousand tens, here's tw when we got to twenty twenty. I there's more that I didn't read because I can't pronounce them, but I don't know who who the hell uh, we were talking about. So anyone out there, if if any of that resonated with you, then well, Keith then Buckley's fine. on there. Keith Keith's a friend of ours. Where's that? Keith Buckley's not. He, he used to be with the with with the band. Every time I oh, die, oh here. He's, every time I die, yeah, twenty ten. He's, he's solo now, and then um. Well, you know what? It, it, Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, Tristan sent me here. J Josh, uh, Josh Homo. What is he? Homie, Home. 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 Um, I heard them when they had that. I guess that one hit the um. Uh, what the hell was it called? What's his name? Did, 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 did. Yes, that's it. Yeah, and what's his name is putting on a fucking drum fill clinic. Uh, that's Grohl, right? Uh, yeah, that's uh, See, yeah. on the drums, yeah. right? Yeah, that's, that's Grohl. Holy shit! I I saw them. They were doing like a spot on Conan or something like that. And hey, it was a time, 2010, some of the music was starting to sound the same. I, st I was stopped, and I watched the whole fucking thing. I went and illegally downloaded that music the next day. Um, yeah, ferocious, yeah. but again, no, what happened to them? It's just, I don't know, does anyone last well, anymore? Are we going to no. have any groups that are around for 50 years anymore? I just watched when, uh, when Guns N' Roses, like when Axel walked, and what the fuck was the name of the band? They ended up with Scott Weiland. Scott Weiland came along. Stone From Temple uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Stone Temple yeah. Pilots. But what was the name of the the? Uh, it was act. It was Scott Weiland. Yeah, Velvet, Velvet Underground. Velvet, Re 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 Velvet Revolver. Velvet Revolver. Right. Yeah, Velvet Revolver. Velvet Underground was Lou Reed, right? Yeah. Said, "Hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side." 
And the dildo came through the window. Do, 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 do. Solo act. Fuck. Solo act. Lou Reed. Solo. You can't put him there. Um, Henry Rollins, solo act. Mm, solo, right? Yeah. Solo. Ice tea? <laughs> Ice tea. So, for, so, listen, anyone we missed, anyone out there, you can certainly post them. We want you to share this stuff, too. The show is about you and us. And there's a reason why everybody knows the words to Dynamo Hum. So we got to put Zap in there. Oh, Frank Zap. Oh, you also mentioned Bowie earlier, didn't you? Oh, fuck yeah, Bowie's, uh, Bowie's strong. But, but solo. Bowie, right? just con- Joey, Bowie just continually just fucking reinvented himself. Like, you know, every who five were the, years. Who were the rest? Who were the front men for the famous wrestling factions? Okay, NWO. Who was the front man? Hogan would have to be considered the front Hogan, man. Hogan, right? DX. Was it Sean? Sean, right? Sean, but then uh, then uh, Sean got... Uh, yeah, but Sean. I was say Sean at the start, yeah. Horseman, Nash. Uh, Horseman. Flair. Has to be, not Nash. Uh, Flair, I mean. I called, I called, you, I called you fucking Flair. <laughs> hey, um, I, I, I'll, I'll take it. Um... The Dungeon of Doom, I would have said Sullivan, but when the Yeti was plowing Hogan from behind, that had a very David Bowie kind of feel yeah. to it. So I might go Yeti. <laughs> kind of a Ziggy. Ziggy play guitar. <laughs> Why the Yeti fucked you from behind in the spiders from Mars. Dom, you got plenty of things you can cut for this <laughs> week's uh, social media posts. Oh, he God. played his guitar. 